tip is to drop the jargon. Now, every industry has jar jargon and the AEC industry is no exception. Um, I know that you're not all from architecture firms, you're from different aspects of the, of the profession, but I think there must be a class in architecture school that's called Jargon 101, right? Because if you work for architects, you know that they all have taught, they have all studied, you know, been to that class and gotten an A. <laughs> so, okay, I'm generalizing, I'm generalizing. But whenever you're communicating to external audiences, like, you know, like your clients, remember, they're not architects, they're not engineers, they're not lighting designers, they're not acousticians, they're just normal people, right? So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of some you know, design statements and descriptions to point out the kind of language that I'm talking about. Again, these are all real examples. I've taken off the name so to protect the innocent. <laughs> okay, description number one. The existing concrete structural ceiling has been left exposed and transparently whitewashed to compose with the new concrete floor a contrast to the precision of the German manufactured furniture. Thus, the shot blasted steel staircase forms the metaphor of connectivity and is detailed so not to engage either the 11th or 12th floors. I mean, this probably made sense to the project designer, but I don't think people really talk like this, right? <laughs> um, all right, if you like that one, I'll give you another one. The walls of the building are slightly tilted away from each other in areas to break the mass of the simple box. This subtlety creates a sophisticated reading of the building that changes as one approaches from different directions. The simple box's shadows create depth where it is not expected from distant vantage points. I mean, can you imagine reading this in the New York Times, right? So I think that I'm going to give you now an example now we've had those, something that is a little bit more clear and gets to the point without being bogged down by so much jargon. MPAC had no precedent. It consists of two parallel structures that separate the traditional and experimental venues. The North Wing has a large atrium surrounding a 1,200-seat concert hall, the centerpiece of the complex. There were many challenges, difficult site conditions, a changing and evolving building program, acoustical and seismic isolation requirements, and the incorporation of state-of-the-art technology. Working closely together with the client and the entire building team, the engineers helped to resolve the complexities inherent in the project. So, you get the idea. I mean, I just want to make sure that you connect with your audiences in a way that they can understand you. If you're not sure, if you're writing something and you're not really sure if something's going to connect with people outside of the AEC, AEC industry, then maybe you want to show it to you know, your sister or your best friend, assuming they're not also in the AEC industry, to see if they understand it. Because if they don't understand it, you, know, you can be sure that your potential client probably doesn't understand it. So I beg you, unless you're sending materials to Architectural Record, which probably would love the jargon and the, the design statements I showed you earlier, or civil engineering or another you know, industry type publication, I beg you not to use jargon. I mean, you know, other than your colleagues, no one's gonna understand you. Your, your wife, your brother-in-law, the person sitting next to you at the baseball game is gonna look at you like you have three heads. I mean, I, I guarantee it.